down there. Oh, wait. Let's get it recording here. Hey, guys. Welcome on Facebook Live that you're watching. We're trying something new here. We're going to record an episode tonight while we're uh, live streaming. If you're watching and you're having problems with audio or something like that, or can't hear us or can't see us, uh, just leave a comment. Our fearless uh, co-host, Jason, over here is going to be monitoring the live feed, I think. Yeah. Yeah. He can be. Yeah, I'll definitely, I'll, I'll definitely try. I'll definitely. <laughs> is there, is <laughs> we there... have a few things. To, I have a few notes that I got to go through. And okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, we'll, yeah. I can we'll, always get it on the tablet, we'll make too. It. Yeah, but, sure, um, sure. Are you comfortable like that? Oh, man, yeah. You're like so all hunched over? I know. <laughs> Like, I've been that. at work all day. Get, my my back hurts. Like my oh, does it dude. help to go forward? I mean, sometimes yeah, man. It. I mean, doing manual labor. You're. It depends on which which muscles you're using that day, right? You know, um, uh, especially in the uh, factory situation, right? Uh, so we haven't officially started yet. So we're still just going through and setting this up. But these guys on Facebook can watch it. Guys, we're going to start here in a few minutes with the episode. Yeah. Uh, I was going to try to, uh, is this going to, oh. as it's playing, is it going to, yeah, you might want to keep the, go <laughs> keep the, keep the audio down on it. I was just saying, just if you look right, at comments, right, right, you can right. see if anyone's yeah. in there's anyone in there watching or yeah, we got seven. Okay. Welcome. Yeah. Can you All right. S- can you see who it is? You probably can. If you scroll down there, I want to say hi. This is this uh, podcast called Two Old White Guys Trying to Use I Facebook. <laughs> Two Old White Guys Trying to Use Technology. <laughs> right. Uh, All right, you want to go? Sure. These guys on Facebook are getting a little behind the scenes, so this is what Jason and I do a little bit, yeah. maybe a little bit of like two and a half minutes of prep. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> and then we start. Okay, <laughs> here we go. Sure. Exploring theology, doctrine, and all of the fascinating subjects in between, Broadcasting from an undisclosed location, Dead Men Walking starts now. Well, hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Dead Men Walking. Jason, how are you, sir? Great, great. Hey, listen, we've got a topical episode for you, but I'm going to have Jason read our proof text that we're going to be talking about and kind of swirling around as the foundation for this episode. So, Jay, can you uh, read Romans 13, 1 through 4 for us? Yep, yep. Let every person be subject to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except from God, and those those that exist have been instituted by God. Therefore, whoever resists the authorities resists what God has appointed, and those who resist will incur judgment. For rulers are not a terror to good conduct, but to bad. Would you have no fear of the one who is in authority? Then do what is good, and you will receive his approval, for he is God's servant for your good. But if you do wrong, be afraid, for he does not bear the sword in vain. For he is the servant of God, an avenger who carries out God's wrath on the wrongdoer. Mm, That is a powerful set of verses, and very popular right now it seems like on social media and in churches yeah with everything that's going on Mm -hmm. tonight's episode we wanted to or today's episode depending on this morning's episode whenever you're listening to it Mm. uh we kind of wanted to focus on a couple topical things Uh, i think we wanted to touch on the covid19 pandemic and the christian response to it as well as also going on right now we have the black lives matter and the uh kind of civil unrest and uh, the Christian response to it. And we just felt that Romans 13 was just a great place to kind of lay the foundation for that yep. discussion. Yep. Uh, because everything that we do as Christians has to come through the worldview of the Bible mm-hmm. and line it up against that. Um, I feel that maybe there are a lot of Bible-believing Christians out there that sometimes, and I'm guilty of this as well, and I'm sure you are too, to where we let the secular culture influence us over the gospel culture, the biblical culture, what the Word says. So we were just going to sit down and have a conversation 
Um, I know we had a lot of people reach out to us on our Instagram and uh, Facebook page and really wanted to know thoughts on COVID-19, the civil unrest that's going on in the country. Those are two huge yeah. uh, subjects. Huge topics, yeah. A lot uh, of people talking about I, I don't know if you can really come out of those subjects and say you're absolutely right and you're absolutely wrong. Maybe you can. Uh, I do know there's a lot of difference opinion, even within the church. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Now, let alone even within the Christian community. Right. There seems to be a lot of external influences that are kind of shaping how leaders and pastors and uh, churchgoers and Bible-believing Christians are responding to those two subjects. So I figure we'll jump right in. Yeah. You want to start with COVID? I mean, we kind of touched on that. Yeah, we're we've been just, doing this right through COVID, so we kind of right. touched on it a few times. Yeah, I mean, just there's, briefly. There's a lot to bring to the table. I mean, the mask issue, the uh, the governing issue uh, yeah. that just came out today from uh, Governor Whitmer in here in good old state of Michigan, mm-hmm. and uh, getting fined and what how businesses are responding and. Yeah. yeah so for those listening or watching that. Um, to, to what Jason just said. So we just had an executive order signed by our governor here in the state of Michigan that said, if you are not wearing a mask in public or in a place of business, uh, that you will be fined $500, $500 as Isn't a that by July infraction. 13th, I think is the, I think it is. Okay. It's, it's yeah. here in a f- next few days. Yeah. Yeah. And there was a lot of kind of recoil from that, from mm-hmm. a lot of people in the state of Michigan. Uh, we, we were actually going in the opposite direction of, uh, you know, the, the phases of mm-hmm. reopening and getting back to normal. We're actually taking a step back in Michigan, even though, uh, COVID deaths are down, COVID cases are, down, uh, we seem to be going in the opposite direction, but, um, yeah, the biggest questions I've been getting from people is how do you respond to that as a Christian? Right. And I can tell you that, you know, the same Christians that say, Hey, wear a mask, it's the law, we should obey the government, Romans 13. Mm. I say measure everything against the word. Uh, government was put into place for those who, uh, to, for the, to keep those uh, to continue to act righteously, as we just read in verse 4, mm-hmm. Romans 13. So I've kind of come across this where we, you know, both sides of the fence kind of use the same text. Right. Right. And when I look at Romans 13, when it comes to a soft tyranny, kind of like wearing a mask or a secondary tax or, you know, uh, over-regulation of personal freedoms and businesses, I, I, I classify those as a soft tyranny. I look at what Paul's saying, and I don't think we can make an argument for Romans 13 that says whatever the government says we're That's supposed to do yeah. because God put the government Right. in control and instituted its, its authority. In fact, it says something very different to me mm-hmm. in those verses. Definitely. Uh, we all know right now that if, uh, you know, as Bible-believing Christians, if um, the government, uh, you know, made theft legal, mm-hmm. we would still say, well, our moral standard, according to the Bible, says we're not going to steal, right? right? We saw this with slavery, uh, within the church, we had something that was legal and not moral. We see this with abortion, yeah, right? We see something that's legal but not moral. So there's all kinds of examples throughout our history to where the church has actually stepped back and said, well, no, uh, just because it's instituted as legal by our governments, whether local, state, or federal, uh, the law of God supersedes that. Right. And the early church struggled with this as well, even down to gathering. They weren't allowed to gather. Uh, Which is going on. Under Rome. (laughs) Right? Some parallels there, right? Some stuff out in California going on right now. But that's a a great point. What did the early church do? Did they say, oh, okay, Rome Rome said uh, we can't gather. Paul says we're supposed to listen to the authorities, so we're not going to gather. Didn't they tell Paul to stop? Spreading the gospel. Sure. I think he was imprisoned a few <laughs> Wasn't times. He <laughs> <laughs> but he kept preaching. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. so anyone I feel if they're a Christian that says, Well, Romans thirteen, you have to listen to what the government says because it's been instituted by God, I think they're missing the point of Romans thirteen. Mm-hmm. I think they're missing the really important point. And you wanna I think I have I wanted you to read that verse four again. I have 
Uh, Do you have the special I, I have Bible? a version here that I don't like, and I don't know why it's out here in my office. Um, and yeah. I think, did you have ESV? Is that what you were reading I, from? Yeah, ESV. Yep. And I think it's verse 3, verse and, three, three and 4, maybe. Yeah. Uh, for rulers are not a terror to good conduct, but bad, but to bad. Would you have no fear of the one who is in authority? Then do what is good, and you will receive his approval. Um, for he is God's servant, for mm-hmm. you, you're good. Uh, but and then there's yeah. something in there like, well, why do you think they carry guns and swords and weapons? Right. Because if you're doing something evil, you're going to get reprimanded. Yeah. Because I think people have to look at the, of why the law was even instituted. And when I say law, I'm talking about Mosaic law, God's law. He, he was basically saying, and Paul said it, it's like, it's like a mirror. It shows you that you are flawed. The law does. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. I think I was watching a video by, I don't know, maybe Dennis Prager. And he was talking about, um, you know, if once again, if theft was legalized tomorrow, would thefts go up? Well, yeah, right. They would. Right. Because the consequence of the law helps keep our unrighteousness in check, our yeah. sinful nature in check. Mm-hmm. I'm going to tell you right now, you could have the most devout uh, Bible believing Christian, but if you were allowed to take an extra $20 from a business owner or, you know, uh, I don't know, cheat on your taxes. And we say cheat, but it was legal to do so. Yeah. You would do it. Yeah. A lot of people would do it. I'm not saying you personally. I'm saying a lot no, of people. I would. Go, a no, lot of, <laughs> <laughs> if anyone from the IRS is. <laughs> wait, I mean, wait. He's I'm joking. Just, I'm just joking. We don't want an audit. <laughs> but that's the whole point is we're fallen and we're sinful. Rocky five. What's that? We're Rocky five. <laughs> you, do you, did you ever see that movie? Mm, so, I don't know him by number, but okay. I've seen him so all. Rocky five, he's like super broke. He lost all, everything. He goes back to Philadelphia or whatever. Okay. And, and uh, um, uh, at the end, the guy's like, uh, I'm sorry. I'm like interrupting no, this, this biblical discussion five. with Rocky five. This, this promoter, uh, says you hit me. I'll sue. And Rocky turns around. All of a sudden he just hits him. And he's like, sue me for what? <laughs> Wait, so talking about not paying your taxes made you think of that? Yeah, I was just thinking about getting sued or, you know, or whatever. It's fine. Right. Yeah, Rocky Five. Go and check it out, everybody. Yeah, so this is this episode's a promo, essentially, for a 25-year-old movie. Is that yeah. what we're doing here? Hey, man, box set. <laughs> they keep coming out with those things, too. He keeps Funny. pumping them out. Sorry. Okay, let's go back to the Bible. This is cool. Uh no, so like I was saying, when you try to institute Romans 13 to say uh, if the government tells you to do something just because it's the law, mm. well, I think we as Christians have a lot of arguments against a lot of things that's happened in this country mm-hmm. that we say, no, it might be legal, but it's not moral. Right. And I think what the law does is it keeps the sinful nature and the unrighteous man, and when I say man, I'm talking about mankind, in check. Mm-hmm. Right. There are some people that don't do unmoral acts just because they're scared of the consequence. Mm. Okay. Or they're fearful of the consequence. In fact, I think there are some people out there that would probably do some very severe unrighteous acts, whether it be murder or extortion or theft or, you know, some type of physical harm to someone else. Uh, And the reason they don't do it or they're discouraged by it is because the law says there's consequences for that, mm-hmm. right? Um, and that's what Paul's saying here. He goes, look at the leaders, the authorities of the government have been set up according to that principle of God's law, meaning they will not or they should not uh, basically mess with the righteous mm. or throw the righteous in jail or if you're being peaceable and obeying the law, not uh, arrest you or, you know, Uh harm you or back then, heck, torture you and kill you. But if you are doing something immoral or illegal, then yeah, of course, in verse four, why do you think they have the sword to enforce that? And that principle has been instituted by God. Uh Okay, he's talking to uh, Jews uh, and some Gentiles there, but um, and, and talking from a Jewish standpoint as well. I mean, that's why the Jews had the law. That's why God gave the Jews the law to set them apart from other people. We talked about this on 
uh, past podcasts about mm. eye for an eye, meaning equal punishment under the law, right? Mm-hmm. So for me, when someone uh, says Romans 13, we have to do whatever the government says, I says, well, that's just not what those verses are talking about. Right. You know, and I think that trickles down into some of the things we're seeing now with COVID, um, you know, in California, you cannot uh, worship. You can't open your mouth and sing right. at church during praise and worship. Uh, there's places in other states where you can't gather because of this. And you have to realize, I look at everything and say, well, what, what are the, what's the whole picture, uh-huh. right? Because if you just watch cable news and you watch a, a couple, uh, you know, talking heads, you will just hear death, death, death. Everyone's dying. This is a huge pandemic. It's going to kill everyone. Uh, fear, 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 security. You need to put your trust in the state. You need to put your trust in your own might. You need to uh, do what we say or you're going to die. Which one, that's just not the truth. I mean, if you look at COVID facts, okay, uh, USC just came out with a study and said that the fatality rate is 0.01%. Okay? That's less than the flu. Right. Okay? Um you have 136,000 people infected with COVID. 1.2 million people died from driving in cars. So then do we, you know, do we put a five mile limit per day on driving? Do we ban cars? Do we say, Hey, you can't drive anywhere. One and a half million. Right. right? So we get into this weird thing to where when an agenda or certain facts air quotes are really pushed and they're not true. Well, then I push back on that a little bit Mm -hmm. and I have to say, uh, okay, we have an R naught, which is how fast the virus spreads about the same as the flu. We have the average age of people dying from COVID-19 uh, is 84, uh-huh. 84 years old. Uh-huh. Average life expectancy is 79 in the United States. Yeah. I mean, geez, maybe some people should get COVID. They could live five years longer. Right, right. I mean, it's ridiculous. <laughs> right. And I'm not trying to make light of people passing yeah. away or dying. I mean, we, we love our seniors and older people. That's really who it's attacking. But you've also got to realize that all COVID-19 classifications are classified that way with any respiratory issue. Mm-hmm. So our very first case in Monroe County of a person who passed away uh, due to COVID-19 had heart disease, cancer, overweight, diabetes, and then got a respiratory illness, tested positive for COVID-19. They said, well, oh, that's what killed that him. That was, yeah. And he was, he was in, you know, basically near hospice before uh, COVID-19 was classified as his death. So not only that, but you have the CDC, uh, the Center for Disease and Control in the United States, said, oh, yeah, if you have the common cold and you're in that coronavirus, because it's a, there's a whole bunch of viruses in the coronavirus, hmm. okay? It's the common cold, flu, pneumonia. If you have any of those, everything you're now really, classified. Yeah, yeah, everything fits in it. Yeah, so you could walk in with a common cold, be tested, you're in that coronavirus family, you're now a carrier of coronavirus. For the common cold, pneumonia, influenza, COVID-19. And that's right from the government site saying that. Mm-hmm. So, you know, when Christians come to me or even non-Christians and they say, how can you, you know, not do this or not wear a mask or don't, you know, not listen to authority? I just say, well, I'm looking at it from, I want to say either a facts base or logic base. Mm-hmm. Let's look at all the whole picture here. Right. Yes. Some people, some people have passed away. Yeah. Right. Uh, but when we compare it to pneumonia, flu, SARS, um, H1N1, H- heck, even H1N1, a lot of people don't realize 60 million Americans were infected with H1N1. Jeez. One in five people. Yeah. We had uh, 2 million deaths. Did Does anyone remember that? Right. That was just 10 years ago under right. Obama. Yeah. But nothing on the news, no scare, no fear, uh, no, uh, you know, put your mask on. Right. And that was a much deadlier virus right. than Corona ever was. Yeah. So when I look at all of that, um, I kind of see a fear and security culture, secular culture, really pushing that on the church and saying, hey, you, you don't need to trust in God. You need to trust in the state, right? And when we had Sam Storms on, what was he talking about when he even says the antichrist spirit, the spirit of rebellion? Mm-hmm. Whose team are you going to be on? God's team or the team that rebels against God? Right. And when I look at these small things like masks, closings, not being able to gather at church now, and I compare it to what the virus actually is, 
I look at that and say, well, this is a this is a form of this uh-huh. is a form of conditioning, and especially a form of conditioning for Christians to put their trust in not only the state but in themselves. Right, lean not on thy own understanding. Uh-huh. Uh, instead of trusting in God. And that's what it really comes down to. When I talk to a lot of believers that are, you know, for these executive orders and for the mask wearing and for, uh, you know, comply, comply, comply at all costs without any question, when I really dig down to the root of it, they, they're living in fear and they're not trusting in the one who created them, saved them, daily provides for them. Right. as Isaiah says. Uh, and I think when you have that paradigm shift of the Daniel or the Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego mm-hmm. or the Elijah or the David in Psalms and say, you are my everything. I daily depend on you. Um, take my life or give me my life. It doesn't matter because at the end of the day, I serve you and I'm here to sacrifice for you and obey. Then I think all these other things kind of fall to the wayside, right? you know, like the mask wearing it and things like that. Um, so I guess that's a, that's a little drawn out there. If you want to jump in or say something, well, there were, there were a few verses. No, 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 that's, that's good stuff. I mean, that's, you know, where, where we're at right now, you know, um, uh, we're being told, uh, (laughs) yeah, that, that they have all the answers. Um, uh, and we just have to listen and, you know, that, uh, that we just have to hop on board and not sing in church. And I'm starting to see, I mean, I don't know if anybody would agree with this or not, but uh, I mean, the Christian church is the most persecuted, you know, religion, I mean, out there. I mean, like we are continually just being, you know, jumped on and um, uh, not physically. Well, in some places, maybe possibly, but I mean, there's always someone out there that's just pushing back at everything. And internationally, that's that's to be expected because our, our actual belief is not to, yeah. Push back. Look right. at you. you, like you go we're supposed draw a card- to just go wash feet all the time and not have anything else to say about abortion, like you said earlier. Right. About wearing a mask, about, you know, and anything, you know, like, yeah. I mean, like we can't say anything about anything. Like we're just yeah. supposed to sit back, take it for what it's worth, and, you know, just go hide in our home until, you know, God comes back and takes us out of here. Sure. <laughs> in the escapism. Pre trip, right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Which, uh, yeah, nihilism is a big bug, man. It just a big bug just flew Jeez. into the studio. <laughs> yeah. yeah, nihilism isn't isn't true Christianity mm-hmm. either, right? Mm-hmm. right. Uh, just oh, sit back and whatever will be will be, and right. hide my hide myself, mm-hmm. you know, ostrich in the head in the sand type deal. Yeah, uh, I was just saying too, though, that that makes for an easy target for Christianity because we don't have uh, tenets or doctrines say like 25 to 35% of the believing Muslims in this world, which is about three to 4 million people Mm -hmm. that believe, um, you know, it's okay to kill someone if they belittle the prophet Muhammad. Mm. Uh, Now that's going to be sticky for someone to hear that might be listening to this and say, oh, well, that's, I don't know what it's even the word you use for that xenophobic. Is that what you use for, you know, anti-Muslim? That gets thrown around. But that's the facts, Yeah. right? You do it. You do an international survey of almost five hundred thousand people, and they said twenty five twenty five to thirty five percent on some scale said, "Yeah, the, it, it's it's okay to um, put to death a woman who who has had uh, sex outside of marriage. It's okay to put to death a person if they belittle the Prophet Muhammad." Um, you know, fifteen to eighteen percent of them believe that uh, you know bombings uh, were okay in the name of uh, jihad. Allah, oh, jihad. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So my, and my whole point wasn't to get on the whole, you know, different religions and, and things like that, but you've got a hundred thousand Christians in, in China that, uh, have been murdered. You've got all these Christians in Iraq and Saudi Arabia tortured and murdered. And I think that's a little bit easier of a target for a non-believing world, uh, just because, yeah, we're not going to come back and, you know, bomb you because you kill, I mean, we know as believers that martyrdom might be part Uh of our walk. Right. I mean, uh, you know, the blood of martyrs is really what watered the early church. Yeah. 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 And I mean, you know, here in, here in America, I mean, even just the arguments that the, the doctrine, the theology arguments that we get in, 
you know, over yeah. here. Um, uh, and I know that's, you know, not as, as, uh, harsh as, uh, obviously getting your head chopped off right? and all of that. But I mean, it, it is, uh, I mean, the world looks at the church and sees that sometimes we can't even get along, you know? And, yeah. it, and it's like, I mean, you know, we're, we are, um, uh, told to call out false teachers. Sure. You know, we are, uh, you know, we are given that, <laughs> given that appointment. Um, Not only uh, call them out, but expel them from the fellowship. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, but again, um, some people may just completely disagree and uh, think that universalism is something that um, is supposed to be a part of the church and um, that the new age should go ahead and be let into the church. Um, (coughs) But again, I mean, no, it's not. It's not yeah. biblical. <laughs> it's not, you know, I mean, it, as much as you want to go into a works-based theology, um, it's not right. You know, it's not biblical. It's not, yeah. it's not um, how uh, our faith is set up. You know, it's by grace you're saved, not by what you do, you know, and, that, and that's what um, the American church is headed towards, you know. Oh, I don't well, think, it's already there. I think it's I there. Mean, it's been there. <laughs> and, know. you know, I really think it has a lot to do with if you, you know, you do a bird's eye view of the Christian church and it really comes down to, and this has been going on for a long time. This isn't like the last five or 10 years. I'm talking 50, 60, 70 years in mm-hmm. America where the church, the Christian church, the believers has allowed the secular culture to dictate right. what the church does. Right. And it has not dictated to the secular culture what the gospel says Mm -hmm. okay if you go if you were to go down into a southern baptist church in 1950 okay the blacks were sitting on one side the whites were sitting on the other side Mm -hmm. why Mm -hmm. because the law said the culture said segregation yet when they would sit in those same pews and they would read verses like there's no Jew, no Greek, no yeah. slave, no free. We have all been redeemed by Christ. We are all the church, right? Why, and there probably was some churches that were doing this, but why war, wasn't those churches being counterculture and saying, no, we're not going to do what is legal because it's not moral. Just because something is legal doesn't make it moral. Mm-hmm. And just because something is legal doesn't make it okay to do or not to do Mm -hmm. we have to do what the bible tells us right you know so and we've seen this just escalate in the last 15 20 years with with the culture wars right from everything from you know what what is a life Mm -hmm. right life at conception life at birth you know the whole it's not a life until it's 20 weeks right you know Yeah, uh, Yeah. the abortion issue. We've seen it in the gender issue where we've seen sexes, and I don't even like saying the word gender. It's sex, male and female. God created two sexes, Mm -hmm. male and female. Yes, there's outliers. Yes, in this fallen world, we have people that have, um, you know, cross chromosomes in medical issues. I get that. That's 0.6% of 0.06% of the population, okay? We're not talking about that. I'm talking about how we were created male and female. This goes back to Genesis 1. Mm. I mean, this couldn't be more simple when it comes to Christianity, but we've seen many denominations freely accept this, right? We just saw last week, and, you know, I'm going to mention names. You might like them, but T.D. Jakes, he came out and said, oh, I've evolved on homosexuality and transgenderism. I have thought about this, and I've just seen too many homosexual and transgender uh, couples that uh, getting along and loving the Lord and serving in the church to say that it's wrong, right. to say that it's wrong in the eyes of God. Yeah. So you have major pastors that have said, you want to know what? The, it, the fight is too great. I don't want to keep fighting against the culture of, of the, the secular world. And I'm going to give in and and let it acquiesce to what the gospel says. Right. And and we keep seeing this over again with with major points uh, where the world and the Bible come in conflict. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's just sad to me right. because now we're seeing it with not only COVID nineteen but uh, even with the racial divide mm-hmm. in this church. You're seeing pastors get up and say things like. 
you know, we support Black Lives Matter. Now, first of all, that name is so disingenuous mm-hmm. because if someone says, I don't support Black Lives Matter, well, what kind of idiot are you? Of course, any regular, sane person loves yeah. black, brown, yellow, white, right? Right. But the issue with that is when you have mega pastors right down to the local church using that terminology mm-hmm. that if you Google Black Lives Matter and you go to their website and you see their platform and what they stand for and what they represent and what they want to institute right. in the United States, you have no business using that terminology because that terminology is linked to cultural Marxism. Mm-hmm. It's linked to, um, you know, uh, everything from the homosexual agenda to the to the trans agenda to uh defunding uh the police burning down burning down government. buildings yeah. uh, taking down statues to erase history <laughs> and look at I'm not here to defend confederate statues and the killing of natives and all that stuff what I'm saying is there's a couple things that you have to understand those who do not learn their history are doomed to repeat it mm-hmm. Okay, and in some instances, we have to have reminders of what our past was so we don't repeat it. Right. You know, Uh, I think Ronald Reagan famously said freedom is always one generation away. Uh, Hmm. Or maybe he said tyranny is one generation away. (laughs) Freedom, (laughs) which or the, you know, the lack of freedom is one generation. Look, I feel like George W. (laughs) Well, what what I'm trying to say. (laughs) Once you get fooled, can't get fooled again. (laughs) What I was trying to say was, essentially, it only takes a generation or two to forget what the previous generation fought for, had, or upheld. Right. Right? So... I'm kind of looking at all of these situations, the the social situation, the Black Lives Matter, the rioting, the uh, COVID-19 stuff with not being able to worship and, and the state dictating to you what you are and are, are and are not allowed to do. And I look at it, and when I see the majority of Christian churches in the United States, I just see them acquiescing to a secular culture mm-hmm. instead of standing firm in the culture of the gospel and proclaiming that, promoting that, and exclaiming that to right, people. Right. And I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that a lot of these pastors um, are playing church and they're not doing church. Right. And you're going to lose a lot of stuff. Yeah. Uh, when you're a 5013C and you are tax free and tax exempt and you have to answer to, and when I say state, I'm talking about government in a whole, whether it's federal or state level. Um, there are some things that you have to tiptoe around yeah. because you do either don't want to lose that status. You don't want the, you know, the local politicians and police showing up at your uh, church on Sunday. You don't want certain groups showing up and calling you certain names and mm-hmm. hurling things at you. You're going to be in the news. You're going to be on the, in the paper. You're going to be on cable, you know, uh, news shows. And to me, I look at that and I look at that as pastors and leaders and Christians caring more about, what men think of them than what God thinks of them. Right. And I've said on quite a few occasions, I'm, I think, I'm, you know, when I look at the choice, I'm going to stand up for what God wants me to stand up for. Uh, because at the end of the day, when I stop breathing, uh, I'm immediately going to be in the presence of an all holy, all righteous, wrathful, sovereign God. And you can, I can tell you right now, I'm much more fearful and reverent of what he's going to say to me than what, anyone down here what any man or woman could say to me Mm -hmm. or what culture might call me Mm -hmm. and if i lose friends over it so be it yeah uh if i you know get banned on social media so be it yeah if people say i'm not gonna vote for you so be it uh we can't come over to greg's house because we think uh he's a little kooky with the way he thinks about what the bible says so be it yeah you know, you uh, Calvinist, <laughs> Calvinist. <laughs> if you've ever been kicked yeah, yeah. out of a Bible study for quoting scripture, yeah, yeah. you might be a Calvinist. <laughs> that's a great uh, meme. Yeah. Uh, but so that's where I kind of see those things. What do, I mean, what do you think when you look at those? Uh, I don't want to conflate COVID well, and Black Lives uh, Matter, but those these yeah. two big things that are going on that are really causing destruction and kind of animosity and like a rift within the Christian church. Right. I mean, I think, uh, you know, the Black Lives Matter movement, um, just like you just said, I mean, I, I don't, I just, who wouldn't 
you know, want to want to stand with someone that was being treated unfairly. Who, right. Who, who wouldn't want to do that? I mean, that that just makes sense. I mean, Acts seventeen twenty six, um, and he made from one man every nation of mankind to live on all the face of the earth. Boom. Having determined allotted periods and the boundaries of their dwelling place. You know, it, it's like, man, oh man, like, like, what are we, what are we saying um, in the church if we are becoming woke, you know, quote yeah. unquote, you know? Um, uh, I mean, it, it's like, just like you said already, I mean, inviting in the world in the secular view rather than the biblical view of, yeah. of what we are supposed to be living out and believing in. And, uh, you know, I mean, yeah, t- t- show me a business that's being racist. Guess who's going to be there standing next to you and never going to that place and, yeah. and standing up against racism. This. Yeah, yeah. I mean, absolutely. like, I mean, come on, like who, you know? Yeah. And, and if there is a person that <laughs> I don't know, you know, would, would stay away from something like that. I mean, I would be surprised, you know, yeah. when, um, if the church was truly doing its job on how church discipline works and how membership works, there would be no racists in the church yeah, ever. Yeah. That person would either be, uh, excommunicated, excommunicated, yeah. expelled or, uh, you know, or brought into restoration, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. uh, in, in, uh, Vody Bachman talks so much about what you just said. We mm-hmm. came from one man. Yeah. Yeah. There's, there's no different races. Right. We're all the same race. We're just different shades of melanin. Melanin. Yeah. We have different melanin. 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 melanin, <laughs> melanin, melanin. <laughs> feel like Melons. Tommy boy. Yeah. Roads. Roads. <laughs> melanin. And then niner. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's tough because then you have Christian leaders. And once again, it's going to sound like I'm just dogging on, Christian leaders, but it's so prevalent right now. Mm-hmm. You see all you see all the the popular guys, you know, the Stephen Furtick's yeah. and the uh Joyce Myers and the Schmoll Schmolstein. The Schmoll Schmolsteins. <laughs> and they use words like systematic racism, mm-hmm. institutional racism. Well, show me. Show me the systematic. Show me Where the institutional, and I'll stand with you shoulder right. to shoulder and we'll shut those things yeah, down together. Exactly. But for you to appease and to try to um, you know, coddle a certain group of people by using these words that have very specific meanings in secularism to try to get people on your side and say, Hey, look at me. Mm-hmm. I'm with you guys. Right. I'm woke. Right. I'm it's it's a form of virtue signaling. Yeah. You know, I posted a meme to our Instagram page a few days ago. And I'm going to paraphrase myself because I can't even remember what I really thought, but I just had this thought. And I said, the reason why woke Christians virtue signal is be outwardly is because they lack the virtue of Christ inwardly. It's just another form of false religiosity, mm. just yet another form of Pharisee religion, right? Yeah. I don't have the inward virtue of Christ. So I'm going to outwardly virtue signal to everyone else because I want, I want to appease them. I want to be liked. I want to be popular. I want to keep what I have. Got to have those checks rolling in. Got to have those cool sneakers. Right. I got to make sure everyone's happy. Got to get my gotta, PPP loan. Got to get my PPP loan. Oh gosh. Did you <laughs> see that? I know. Jeez, I think Joyce Meyer got like $12 million. Know, just... No, she got 15 million oh, and she got 12 geez. million in the bank. You know, so I got three small businesses here in uh, yeah, they in, in my county them. that can't get them. Yeah, and they're shutting down. I, I don't know. We can talk about that on another man, episode, but man. that's that's a little crazy to me. It's unbelievable. And I just had this discussion with my wife talking about that. Mm. Well, well, I'll jump back to what I was just talking to in a second. But I said that kind of actions, like the the Joyce Meyer and the Stephen Furtick, and uh, uh, Kenneth Copeland and the Creflo Dollar and the Joel Olstein that generate hundreds of millions of dollars a year tax right. free right. and aren't using it for the purposes they're supposed to be using it. Mm-hmm. The whole reason, while in in 1920 I believe it was that the government said, "Hey, look at churches, nonprofits. We get it. We're not going to tax you because all your money's going to help people. You're yeah. the social net. Yeah. You know pre." Medicare and pre-Medicaid and pre-Social Security. You're the social of this country. We're not going to tax you. Mm-hmm. 90% of what you're bringing in goes right back out to help right. other people and job placement, food, shelter, job training, all these things. Well, guess what? 
those type of people I just mentioned now, these mega millionaire churches type that put very little back into the community but mm-hmm. take a lot, they make a very good case for the progressives and leftists that say, no, those should be taxed just like businesses. Right. And I don't know if I can really argue with them. Yeah, yeah. I'm not a progressive or a leftist. Right. But I'll tell you what, they make a really good argument. Oh, yeah. When I see a $250 million budget, mm-hmm. one million of that going to missions, the rest of it going to the board, the pastor, right. the the um, the employees, and on personal items. You are running a business. Yeah. You're running a for-profit business as a guise as a nonprofit church. Mm-hmm. So they're doing us an injustice uh, in the eyes of of the world, not only are they, uh, you know, bad doctrine and and defaming the name of Christ, yeah. but they're the way they're acting is going to get themselves in trouble. Air quotes with the government. The, right. the government's going to come in very soon and just start saying, "Okay, guess what? Yeah. All nonprofits, churches, you're getting taxed." Right. So I look at these local littler churches, right, that are struggling to get by but still hold to that type of entertainment emerging church. Uh, type of theology, like, you know, you got your little mini Stephen Furtick's that want to be, you know, popular and yeah. have the next... Have the smoke machine. Have the smoke machine, the $600 pair of shoes, all that stuff. And I go, look at, you're aspiring to be something that's going to bring wrath from the government down on you because they're not going to let that go on much longer. Let me tell you. Right. The government does not <laughs> does not like it when they see someone making a half a billion dollars and they're not paying taxes exactly. on it. Exactly, yeah. You know? Yeah, and the, and the people looking in on that. You know, I mean, Creflo Dollar bragging about the next plane that he bought, you know? Yeah. I mean, it's like... Which is so far removed from biblical Christianity. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. I don't even yeah. understand. Well, I do understand. Look, at if you're a smart con man, mm. you never want smart people in your audience. No. <laughs> oh, gosh, right? No. You don't want anyone that can expose you. Uh-huh. You look for low-level, entry-level, weak-minded, gullible people. Now... Mm. People listening to this or watching this right now are going, Greg, you sound so mean. You're calling people stupid. You're calling people dumb. Uh, well, I'm not, doing it in, no, I'm, doing <laughs> I'm not doing it in a demeaning manner, but let me tell you something. When when a pastor like Creflo Dollar gets on stage and says, I need a $65 million jet or I cannot do my ministry. Well, if you believe that, then, you know, I've got, I've got, oceanfront property in Arizona to sell you. Yeah. And I'm a real estate agent. I'll find it for you. <laughs> you know? Because that is just gullible. Yeah. Um, if that's the case, what did pastors do before air travel? Yeah. You, you know, just there's a million different ways you can debunk that. But my point is, is a good con man will never put people around him or people in his audience or followers that actually think logically and, you know, critically think and can debunk him. Right. Or the con ends. Well, it, it's, I mean, it goes back to the work workspace that I was talking about a little bit earlier. I mean, you know, that, that stuff puts people in bondage. I mean, oh, it's yeah. like, what, what did I not do? You know, yeah. all of, all of a sudden people become atheists. They become agnostic, gnostic. I mean, like, you know, they, they become, uh, uh, they just run away from Christianity because they didn't sure. get this breakthrough, you know? Um, I mean, there's, there's plenty of people out there that are that are looking for that breakthrough and saying, why, you know, why has this thing not happened for me, but it's, you know, happening for this guy, you know, I, I gave my money where he said to give it to, right. And now it's not, you know, it's not happening or, or whatever. I, I, I fasted three times a day, you know, three times sure. a year or uh, a week, um, for the entire year or whatever. And this thing is still, you know, I'm not, I'm not getting pregnant or we're, we're not having a baby or, or whatever, you know, um, uh, which is so which, sad. Yeah. I they're mean, running on a treadmill because they're basically running on a treadmill against what the Bible says in multiple places. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. There is no one righteous. No, yeah, not one. Exactly. Right. You, you, like <laughs> your good works are like filthy, filthy rags. rags. Your righteousness is like filthy rags to God. Yeah. Okay. That that's scary. Yeah. It's not that I'm a sinner. I know that, but the fact that everything that I try to do in my own strength that I think is good, mm-hmm. that I think is righteous, yeah. God says, yeah, that's like filthy yeah. used rags. Right. And they'll never attain that in a workspace mm-hmm. salvation. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, it, and it does, you're so right. It keeps people in this perpetual bondage, yeah. which you've had, you have denominations and you have whole churches, uh, non-Protestant, a lot of Catholic churches profit off of keeping right. people in that kind of treadmill. Right. And um, and I mean, you know, I I mean 
Gosh, I've heard so many stories about, uh, and I know this is a completely different uh, topic and religion. Let's do it. This is a special episode. Mormonism, you know. Um, uh, I've met a couple people that um, just... I mean, they, they were just like, I just, I just can't do enough, you know? Right. And it's like, yeah, you're, you're right. You can't, (laughs) you need, you need a savior. His name is Jesus Christ. But you know, you obviously different, um, uh, different frame of mind. Well, it's sad. It's sad because work-based salvation also takes away that blessed assurance. Yeah. They don't have any assurance. Mm -hmm. Um, I talked to a very devout Catholic. We had a good four hour discussion. This guy was going to be a priest. Uh, before he met his wife on like CatholicMingle.com. I'm not kidding you. She was going to be a no. nun. He was going to be a priest. They met. Really? And they're like, they're, they're, they're Catholic they're, Mingle. They're, <laughs> I think it was like Catholic <laughs> Mingle or something like that. I know there's Christian Mingle. There's actually a Netflix movie called Christian Mingle. But after three hours of talking <laughs> with him, it, it was so sad because he basically just said, I, he said, he was very truthful. He said, I don't know yeah. if I will be in heaven when I die. We'll <laughs> see. You. When we get up there, Gosh. because I could do something that offends God. And if I don't ask for forgiveness through uh, my priest, or if it's a mortal sin uh-huh. that I commit, um, I don't know. And I just went, wow, what a way to live life, yeah. having absolutely no assurance of your salvation. Right. You know, and and, th- right. and that's a that's a big theme through a lot of major religions. Yeah. I mean, Mormonism, yeah. uh, Jehovah Witness, uh-huh. Muslim, yeah. same way. Right, Gosh, uh, and a lot of Catho- a lot of those in Catholicism as mm-hmm. well too. And one, I would say, yeah, that's that's sad, but also I would say it's just not biblical. Yeah. And- well, I mean, it, it runs through uh, word of faith, you know. Um, <laughs> I sure. Mean, I mean, uh, yeah, certain. Um, I mean, charismatic, certain sects of uh, charismania. And, sure. Uh, Pentecostalism and uh, yeah, man. I mean, it's yeah. Anyway, yeah. Word of faith is, <clears throat> excuse me. Word of faith is so sad because then it puts it right back on the person. Well, you didn't have enough faith, right? Yeah, you didn't pray hard enough. You, you didn't, and it's too like much, yeah, you you you're just full of unbelief, aren't you? Yeah, I just love full. it when people. Somebody said that to me once. I, I you got you got something on you because <laughs> uh, I love I love. I love praying over people like you because you got so much unbelief. I was like, what someone, are you talk- someone said that to you? you? Say- yeah. And no. it was, it was within the past couple of years. Really? Yeah. I love praying for you because you have so much unbelief. So much unbelief. <laughs> Did you say, yeah, <laughs> like, I do. <laughs> it was like, uh, because I'm a fallen human. Man, oh man. Yeah. Where do I even <laughs> start with this conversation? Guy. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> Guy. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Anyway. So, yeah, for me, if we're shifting into the, like, the Black Lives Matter, what Mm -hmm. really bothers me is that Christians are now identifying themselves first on the color of their skin or what social economic group they belong to instead of as followers of Christ, Mm -hmm. identifying themselves as uh, believers in Christ. And I know you and I both listen to... um, just thinking podcast mm-hmm. with Virgil and Daryl. Yeah. Uh, and I think Virgil is going to come on the podcast for I us hope, here man. soon. He's awesome. Um, and they, and they, and we'll reiterate what they said too, but as Christians, you know, like the George Floyd thing, our first response should be sorrow for the fact that an image bearer of Christ mm-hmm. died mm-hmm. as a believer, as a Christian, it's not, Oh, a black person died. Uh Oh, a white person died. Oh, a second amendment advocate died. Oh, a, uh, you know, Methodist died. Oh, insert, you know, Indian. It shouldn't be that it should be an image bearer of Christ because Uh that's what the gospel tells us, right? Uh To love one another as we love ourselves. Right. And let me tell you something. We're a narcissistic people. Social media has taught us anything in the last 10 or 15 years. (laughs) Boy, do we love yeah, ourselves. Man, I know everything. <laughs> Boy, are we smart. Yeah, right. Boy, yeah. do we love ourselves. I can't wait right? to put up something. I can't wait to put a couple paragraphs and tell people how. People need to know my opinion. <laughs> I am right. 
It's like, I have such a unique perspective. Right, and then right. it's like 800 of the same posts just worded <laughs> no, a little bit differently. Right. right. Uh, everybody <laughs> I've heard the same thing on the news. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. You know? I mean, it's hard to come out with new content. I mean, Solomon even talked about that in Ecclesiastes, yeah. <laughs> oh, there's nothing, nothing new, new under, under the sun. Nothing yeah. new under the sun, yeah. <laughs> so it hurts me to see Christians and self-professing Bible-believing Christians who put their identity in either where they grew up, their skin color, their economic status, right? All of these other things, except of their identity being in Christ, Mm -hmm. right? Because it says you've actually been crucified with Christ yeah, and now are a slave to righteousness. Mm -hmm. So the minute you were regenerated and you came to Christ and the Lord opened your eyes, there was no longer uh, that Jason. There was no longer that Greg. Mm -hmm. There was no longer that whoever, you, you were crucified with Christ and now your identity is in him, right? right? That's why we talk about the fruits of the spirit and and being more Christ-like and always refining and sanctification. And when we say, oh, uh, I'm a Christian, but, or I'm a blank Christian, oh, that irritates me to no end because mm-hmm. you're now stepping outside of the identity of Christ and you're going back into that secular culture that says, oh no, you might be a Christian, but it's more important that you're a blank Christian, black Christian, Mm -hmm. Southern, uh, you know, rich, poor, whatever adjective you put in front of Christian, Mm -hmm. just like how, uh, we, you know, when you put adjectives in front of the word justice, that doesn't work. There's just, just justice, right? No such thing as social justice. There's justice. And then there's injustice. That's it. Well, there's unjustice too. There's Three of them, but hey, don't, don't RC confuse Sproul, me. Man. RC Sproul does a great talk on the difference between justice, injustice, and unjust. unjust. Yeah. Mm. Uh, and for anyone listening, just go look up Unjustice RC Sproul. It's about an eight minute clip. It's absolutely a uh, beautiful clip. But so getting back to my point of with, with the whole Black Lives Matter, what, what really uh, bothers me about one Christian leaders using that terminology, because that terminology to Uh, a certain movement that is full of cultural Marxism, full of communism, full of uh, trans and homosexual agendas, full of death, chaos, chaos, um, civil unrest, tearing down um, uh, authority structures, right? Defund the police. and And look at, I get it. There's cops out there. We're all human. There are some bad cops out there. I will never sit here and say all cops all the time. Right. Are great. I've ran into some personally that I just went, wow. Right. I don't even know why you carry a badge and a gun. Like, mm-hmm. I'm fearful for our society that right. they gave you that. Because you either, A, have such a power trip or don't understand constitutional rights or have a, you know, chip on your shoulder because of something that happened 20 years ago and now you're going to take it out on someone who's going 10 miles over the speed limit or whatever it is. I get that. Yeah. But the fact when you're calling for the actual authority and law to be torn down, that's what Paul's talking about. Let's bring it back home to thirteen, Romans 13, where we started. He's talking about that law-abiding, keep everyone in check, try to keep things moral. That's what God instituted. Yeah. Right? They're, they're, they're peacekeepers mm-hmm. is what they're supposed to be. Mm-hmm. That's, what, that's what Paul calls police officers. Well, they didn't call them police officers in his day, but they were, they were peacekeepers to keep the peace. And when you're calling for that in a movement, that says, oh, we want to tear down the exact thing that the Lord has instituted. And then you have church leaders from the pulpit and from Facebook saying, I align myself with Black Lives Matter. Right. Not Black Lives Matter, Mm -hmm. but the Black Lives Matter. Okay. I think that's the distinction where we get all turned around on. I'm okay with someone saying, yeah, I think Black Lives Matter. I think think that's a really dumb thing to say because... Mm -hmm. Uh, as a Christian, every single unregenerate person and sinner matters, yeah. right? But when you use that that kind of buzz term, Black Lives Matter, instantly the secular world knows exactly what you're talking about, mm-hmm. okay? If I'm a mega church pastor and I get up in front of 2 million people on live stream and 10,000 people in my church and I say, I stand with Black Lives Matter, well, the secular person, the unbeliever watching that knows exactly what you you are saying you're aligning yourself with. Have you seen the uh, the meme of Shadrach and Abednego with uh, uh, Nebuchadnezzar's statue 
and then yeah. Black Lives Matter is uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was on my that it, was on our Instagram feed. Oh, I posted was, that oh, like that three weeks ago. Oh, are you see, <laughs> come on, man. <laughs> That's what I saw. Come but on, they're man. standing up. Everybody yeah. else is bowing. Yeah, you know, and they're standing up, and you know. Well, I think it was uh, the the idol is the Black Lives Matter movement. Mm-hmm. The three standing: Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego is biblical Christianity, mm-hmm. and everyone bowing is woke right. Christianity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and. You know, I had someone ask me, I think, on Facebook, well, what does woke Christianity mean? And when I define it, it's that those Christians that would prefer to adhere to secular the secular culture above the culture of the gospel, that would prefer to virtue signal than have the virtue of Christ, mm-hmm. that would prefer to be politically correct instead of being truthful, right? So woke is almost what Christianity has just started to evolve these last maybe six months, but it's really becoming a meaning of essentially what we've been talking about all evening, putting the culture of the world above the culture of Christ. Right. Um, and adhering to that and bowing to that and saying, look at, uh, yeah, I'm a believer. I'm a Christian, but Hey man, I'm hip. I'm cool. Mm-hmm. I'm with it too. I also duck, 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 Yeah. Dr. Evil, I'm cool with this and I'm cool with that. And mm-hmm. hey, man, we don't judge. Right. Right. I would say the woke Christian loves the judge not lest ye be judged verse. Yeah. They yeah. love taking that verse out of context <laughs> right. and misusing it yeah. because that allows them to say, hey, man, I don't judge. Right. You know, yeah. which that we talked about that on a past episode. That's absolutely misinterpreted scripture. That's not what that verse yeah. means at all. Read First Corinthians 5 and Jude. <laughs> Wait, what's what's. First Corinthians five, uh, where Paul is uh, talking about, um, uh, he comes back to Corinth and learns that a stepson is sleeping with his, okay, yeah, mother, yeah, <laughs> and nobody's sitting. About that was a yeah, test. You oh, great yes. <laughs> <laughs> I know the Bible. Yeah. I just wanted to see yeah, you yeah, dance yeah. around it. <laughs> yeah, <No>. right. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't want to use the exact wording. Yeah, no. But yeah. So what's your thoughts about that, too? I know I just rattled on a little bit about uh, the Black Lives Matter stuff. Right. I I take my stance um, and our stance in the Hamlin family is uh, <laughs> we want to um, live biblically. We want to mm, amen. love our neighbor as ourself and realize that the world is going to act like the world you know looting rioting burning things down right um and saying um crazy things and gaslighting acting like these things aren't happening that actually are um you know um on the other spectrum us as christians we have an obligation we have a um, a handbook right there, um, our Bible to um, to get through things like this. And you know, I I just it it just man, I don't I don't want to say um, no. I'll just go ahead and say it, it doesn't matter. Um, <laughs> it just it just kind of irks me when I when I do see the the woke. Um, the wokeness of the Christian church. Um, you know, we, we do have to watch out. We, you know, we, we do have to watch out with our words because if you align yourself with certain things, I mean, you sure. know, uh, there, there's in some ways, um, uh, there's all of a sudden you, you need an explanation. Um, and especially if you are a lead pastor and you do align yourself with a certain movement i mean you 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 know there's almost no return in some right. ways i mean yeah. you're gonna you're gonna lose some of your congregation too and it's not in the it's not because you're so you know noble you took this noble stand you know it's like no man like you pretty much walked away from from what we are taught in the bible you know, about some of these positions that we should hold to, hold fast to. Um, and, uh, yeah, but yeah, that's... The- I've, I had this thought, too, is shouldn't 
shouldn't non-believers and believers alike know us by the fruits of the spirit? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Right. So if, if you are known by the fruits of your spirit, love, peace, kindness, joyfulness, uh-huh. long suffering, all those things, why do you have to get up to an unbelieving world and then try to align yourself with the movement to try to prove that uh-huh. to them and to get approval and to get approval. Yeah, yeah. Why are you yeah. trying to gain that approval? Shouldn't they just know by your actual faith uh-huh. through the alive work that you have? Like James talks about an alive faith right. produces works. And those works are based in the uh, fruits of the spirit. Why would you have to do that? Right. And I think it goes back to that thing I said, where there's a lack of inward virtue when you have to out, outwardly signal uh-huh. that virtue uh-huh. hey hey look at me I'm, yeah. i've i've got whatever it is you're looking for i got some I of just, it and i just put up a facebook post to make sure that you're okay you right. know to make sure that you know that i have a you know a thought on this yeah. you know and like what is it called what is it called when you're what's that you're, you're if you don't if you don't put up a, a post um, oh yeah, people, uh, uh, white white silence is violence. That's man. right. That's right. Come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've got to get with the culture. Yeah, you know. If you don't say anything, then you must. You know, you you're obviously a a racist. <laughs> Which is crazy because for me, when you call everything a racist, nothing is a racist. Yeah. Right. I mean, literally, when you call everything racism, then nothing is racism. Mm-hmm. So you are actually giving cover for the actual racists that do exist in the world. I'm not saying racism doesn't exist. Mm-hmm. We're a fallen uh, mankind. Oh, yeah. We have hatred in our hearts. Oh, yeah. There are some people out there that, by the definition in the dictionary, think they are superior because of the color of their skin. Mm-hmm. There's probably still a few out there. Mm. I've never met one yet. Mm. Um, they're floating around there somewhere. Mm. I know some people that are have some prejudices and stereotypes. Yeah, That doesn't classify them as a racist. Will Smith said it beautifully. He says, I have never met a racist in my life, but I've met lots of prejudiced people. Mm. And I think that's very wise for him to take those two uh, terms and separate them, Mm -hmm. right? You can have a prejudice. Oh, I think this person will act, do, or say something based on past experiences with a person that looks or earns the same amount or from this region or, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And that's a prejudice. But I don't think that person says, I think I'm better than that person right. because of my skin color versus theirs. I do know that there are some of those people out there. And like I said, show me that person and heck we'll go down to the courthouse right now and figure out a way to, you know, if they're doing something illegal and racist, yeah. I'm, I'm all for it. Yeah. Uh, I'm all for, you know, condemning yeah. them. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Someone's going to take that clip and go <laughs> yeah, racist. Right, I'm all right, for right, it. Right, right. See, <laughs> Greg Moore, Greg Moore, all for racist. Vote Greg. <laughs> right. <laughs> But yeah, you know, man. Yeah, I mean, I uh, I was in a band and uh, used to tour and travel, and I I did see actual racism, like actual racism. The um, the other two guys that were in the band um, were African American, and I mean, I I actually saw it in okay. the South, man. It was it was real. It was like, man, I can't believe that this is going down. You know. Um, uh, but, uh, but another thing that would happen was the people that would be overly nice, like, right. like, oh yeah, 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 yeah. I used to, I used to work with a black guy and, uh, yeah. you know, we, we were good buddies, you know, we were, we, we used to hang out, you know, and it was right. like, why did you even just say that? Like, what do you talk, you know, like why right. all of a sudden do you got to tell us about that? You know, like, <laughs> geez, man. But yeah, there, I think there's two spectrums there right you know and i and i see it a lot in, in the church i mean like you know it's like just let's let's just be cool with yeah. everyone that walks in the building <laughs> you right don't, don't have to go out of your way you know because like that's that's how my buddies felt they felt like everybody would like run up to them because oh my gosh we got we got black people in our church you know all right. of a sudden there everybody you know, like, right. oh my gosh, I'm going to shake his hand, make sure he comes back. You know, it's like, <laughs> they didn't want that. They were just like, right. I'm here to worship God, just like you guys, you know? I had like, a, I had a black couple tell me that uh, with a church that I had attended 
that said they said the leadership made him feel so uncomfortable because it was like overly trying to be like in literally Do you need some water? the pastor turned and, and introduced them to the one other black couple that was there. Oh gosh. And it's like it was almost like they were trying to be like, Hey, look at we have diversity in yeah, our church, yeah. but it was what it really looked like was like, Oh, black couple A meet black couple B. Right. I'll tell you what, if someone did that to me based on my skin color or yeah. I don't know. Could you imagine if we walked into a church and it's like, oh, you have a beard? Here, right. there's three other guys here with a beard. Yeah, yeah, yeah right, right. Why don't you talk to them? Because you probably only talk about all beard yeah, stuff. You guys got to be able to get along, right? Like, go pound sand, yeah, dude. Right. I'm more than my beard, right? <laughs> right. And, I, and I would think that minority the same way. In fact, I know they do because mm-hmm. I talk to them and they, you know, it's, abs- it's so demeaning. Yeah. And my point was, too, was when you call everything a you know, racism. When, when I sit down and talk to someone and say, look at maybe, you know, and I had this conversation with someone in person about the culture of victimhood. Uh Right. Uh, and it runs rapid within the black community of you're a victim. There's institutional racism. Someone's always out to get you this anonymous white privilege racist. It's always there in the ether and you got to fight against it your whole life. You'll never make anything of it because the white man's going to hold you down. Well, heck now the, the brown man and the yellow man, because if there's white privilege, there's definitely Jewish, Chinese, and Indian privilege because they're they're all doing better than white people as a subgroup, as a minority. Oh my. But when you do that and I say, that's a horrible way to raise your children in a, in a culture of victimhood mentality. And someone told me to my face, you're a racist because you said that. And I went, well, it has nothing to do with race. Mm. I would tell that to the people living in the hollers Mm -hmm. in Kentucky. I would tell that to the slums, Mm. uh, the Jewish slums in New York. Anywhere where there's victimhood is being propagated as an excuse not to succeed, I would say that's a bad thing. Right. And then you call that racist. Well, guess what? You've just now taken the the word and all the weight of racism and you've lowered it to such a point that you've given real cover for real racists mm-hmm. right no yeah. because we just hide out in the open then right if you actually d- really truly called racism what it was and despised it that's why that's why we had white supremacy and Ku Klux Klan and all that on the run I mean you came in with you held a hood in, in the 60s, 70s, and 80s, it was like, get out. Uh-huh. Business wouldn't serve yet. Like, you were shunned. But when you call everything racist, when you say, you know, uh, quoting scripture, is certain scriptures are racist, well, guess what? Now that person who truly is racist has evil intent in their heart who does want to either do harm or have hatred towards another person of a different skin color. You've just given them can walk freely through a society because racist racist right it's like oprah in the car you're all you you're a racist you're a racist you're you know yeah and it does such a disservice to actual racism mm-hmm. well i i uh i was telling you earlier about uh Bodie bachman's um his sermon yeah uh called uh i'm pretty i'm almost positive it was cultural gnosticism um but he uh he was saying the, the, the main quote was, you don't know what you don't know, you yeah. know, like you're, you're, you don't know it, but you're racist, like matter, like what you say, because you, and maybe it's, you're not woke, but maybe, you know, uh, but yeah, I know more about you. Whoa, big bug. Um, <laughs> I know more about you than you know. Right. You know, um, it's like, uh, yeah which i would say is a form of prejudice right <laughs> right that's yeah you don't even know it but you're racist right. yeah well, how do you you're know just, that because you're white you're well, that born sounds, into it that sounds yeah. prejudice right, right or because you're this color or that color <laughs> right you know mm-hmm. but this all i mean we're getting a little into kind of the political sphere here when we're talking about virtue signaling and even like intersectionality and having you know what subgroup of victimhood can I belong to so I can be the biggest victim of all time. Mm-hmm. So therefore I get status within yeah. my community. Yeah. Uh, which I see even liberal Christianity and even some moderate and some conservative sects of Christianity falling into this mm-hmm. catering to the victim mentality. 
You know, yeah. we it, once again, when you see on Instagram and Facebook and all social media, you see leaders within the emerging church saying, we stand with you because we know how you're facing systematic racism. And it's like, okay, what system? Let's, let's talk about that system. Right. Let's not throw um, buzzwords and play words yeah. at a group of people so we can either, what, try to get their approval or show that we're, you know, I don't know, on your on, on your side, side yeah, or yeah. whatever it is, then let's go fight the systematic racism through the gospel, right? Through advancing the kingdom here on earth. That's what you should be doing, Mister Pastor. Mm -hmm. Preach the gospel. Yeah. You want to fight racism? Preach the gospel. You want to fight, uh, you know, uh, an unjust court system? Preach the gospel. Mm -hmm. You want to uh, fight racial divide? Preach the gospel. You want to fight um, police brutality? Preach the gospel. Like that's the answer for everything. Yet. We try to use a secular uh, solution yeah. for a kingdom issue. Well, Greg, you're supposed to go in your prayer closet and <laughs> not come out. Is that right? No. <laughs> you're actually <laughs> supposed to go in your prayer closet and then come out of there with right. you know, your, your armor on and you go to battle. Right. Yeah, man. I mean, like, that's, that's where we should be as, uh, you know, as yeah. Christians. As uh, followers of Christ, man, that bug is huge. You're not a bug guy. No, stand. There we go. Kick I'm not. I, I mean, I'm fine. Man, if they're flying <laughs> in my head, though, that's just a June it's bug. Wild. As long as it's not a spider, I'm okay. I mean, you put it on a sandwich, I'll chomp it up. You know. <laughs> <laughs> what? What is that? Is that a movie that I? No, no, that's my. I just came up with a character. This guy that eats bugs. Oh, <laughs> just on the spot like that. Dude, you need to get yeah. to Second City. You got some improv Dude, skills. Dude, I would love to be on Second City. I actually wanted to do improv for a long time. And, yeah? Uh, yeah, but then I had a kid. No, I'm joking. <laughs> I'm just... <laughs> then my life ended. Yeah. No. Actually, my life is awesome, man. You do got a pretty good life Dude, going on man, there. So, so as, cool. as we finish up Except here. Except I have to wear a mask at Ford Motor Company in <laughs> thousand degree weather. But Right. Okay. Uh, so as we finish up, you got any final yeah. thoughts or anything? Did, did we cover? I mean, we talked a little bit about both. Let me check my notes but here. I would probably say to people listening, um, delve into the into the word. Yeah. Get as deep into that and prayer as you can. Read the actual word. Read what the Bible says. Uh, don't surface read it, dig into it. Look at the original Greek, look at the original Hebrew, look at the original Aramaic in some texts, look at your, uh, concordances and your, uh, uh, and your study guides, like turn it over. You can sometimes take two or three verses. I can sometimes take two or three verses and I will get an hour worth of, uh, searching and Googling mm -hmm. and looking at and reading opinions on and do you praying have logos? about. I do. Dude. Dude. I want that. <laughs> I don't have it. You isn't, don't have it? Isn't that, isn't logos ex expensive? Like, no. To have all of, all of it. Oh, I don't have, have the, the whole program. No, I don't have the full program. Gotcha. Okay. No, I the got full the full program is legit, man. Is it? Supposed to be rad. Yeah. I should probably really get that. Rad. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, that would be to anyone listening or watching, that would be my, uh, because yeah. the more you immerse yourself in the word of God, mm -hmm. the less you're going to feel the, the slime of this culture. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, I can't remember who said it, but you know, to even talking about like going to school and being in the world, you can't send your kids to Rome. We can't go out in Rome every day and then expect to come back. Not Romans. Right. So it's like, what kingdom are you actually living in? Mm -hmm. And uh, ultimately put your trust and security in God. Amen. Not in a state, not in a mask, not in a movement, not in a skin color, not in promised economics. Put your trust in God. Put your trust in Christ and Christ alone. What do you got for me? Got a few a few verses real quick. My verse uh, man. Let's I go like it. With, uh, let's go with Psalm 103, okay. 1 through 3. Praise 103, the, 1 through 3. Praise the Lord, my soul, all my inmost being. Praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases. Mm. Um, like Isaiah 41.10. So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. 
I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. And finally, Deuteronomy 31, 6. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified because of them, for the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Awesome. And I'll make sure that we link those scriptures in the description for the episode when it gets put up. Guys and girls, thanks for listening so much. We do appreciate it. Always remember to uh, follow us on Instagram or Facebook. Uh, or YouTube. All our videos are now up on YouTube as well, too, at Dead Men Walking Podcast. It's the same for all three. Feel free to visit the merch case, buy a t-shirt or a mug. Uh, All proceeds go right back into us making more episodes and spreading the gospel and bringing glory to God. That way, that's at deadmenwalkingpodcast.com. So very easy. Google Dead Men Walking Podcast comes up. Mm -hmm. Um, And as always, guys, we we thank you for listening. Jason, do you have anything? Yeah, get. I mean, just get a hold of us if uh, if you have any questions or if you uh, disagree with everything that we said. It's okay. <laughs> we uh, we like discussion, so uh, yeah. yeah let's, and we're always learning, right? Yeah, man. And being yeah. sanctified and sanctified. Yeah, man. Do All this. right, guys. Have a good one. See you next time. Later. I got it. Oh, <laughs> they can still hear me. Yeah. He's like, oh, <laughs>